spring cleaning, a time to remove all the negativity in my life and start fresh. But where to begin? Kennedy, you look disgusting. It's cleaner if you'd shave. Boys don't like hairy girls. Don't you want to feel a bit more feminine? Oh, so you're like a super feminist now. Okay, people said that. But what, I'm supposed to be scared of you? When did female razors become a thing? Gillette introduced the first razor, marketed specifically to women, called the Milady de Colette in 1915. Milady? One sec. So here's what I've gathered. In the Victorian age, the ideal upper-class lady dressed in super concealing clothing, not a shoulder or ankle in sight. So shaving wasn't really a thought. As the Victoria era ended, and being suffocated by fabric was just so last decade, a more relaxed style came out. Female skin could be shown in public. Huzzah! This made marketers go crazy. With all this new bare skin, there were new female vulnerabilities to exploit, and money to make. Look at this ad in Harper's Bazaar the first of the women's magazines to run hair removal advertisements. The fastidious woman today must have immaculate underarms if she is to be unembarrassed. And in the decades following, it doesn't get better. Body hair and fashion style have this indirect relationship. The less clothing you wear, the more you're supposed to shave. This shame to shave becomes tethered to cleanliness, femininity, and overall beauty for a woman. For a piece of metal and pink plastic, you sure have made an impact on the world. The burden of our gender, I guess. But I wish there was somebody to talk to. What's that? That's it! Dr. Sheftall! You got mail. Nice. I had never really thought about the, the issue of body hair until you uh, approached me. I had to really dig deep in my own personal history. I grew up in Jim Crow, Memphis, Tennessee. Given my generation and the fact that I was a Southern black woman, we would not have been socialized to shave our legs, which for example, white women did. And I didn't realize this until I went to Wellesley College. This is the first time I was ever around anyone other than black women. Clearly, white women got a message that body hair was unhygienic, unfeminine, unsightly. There were racial, cultural, and maybe even class differences around body hair. So... Pause. There were a lot of white women in those ads earlier. You didn't notice? Carry on. The beauty industry is a billion dollar industry. It spends an enormous amount of dollars on advertising, uh, on, on television and in magazines, and it's designed to get women to purchase a range of expensive body products that will enhance uh, uh, how they look. And it works, <laughs> it works. So basically women are tricked into buying razors or really any beauty enhancement product in order to be feminine? What does that even mean? First of all, um, the, the way femininity is defined in the US, it is, it is, it is by definition white. Uh, and, and, and in fact, historically speaking, black women were, were not even uh, portrayed or, or constructed as women. And, and definitely not even considered to be feminine. Uh, black women were stereotypically uh, perceived even to be masculine and to have bodies that were veering toward the masculine rather than adhering to dominant culture definitions of femininity. And 
And so dark skin, a full body, uh, an invisible body hair, is defined as, as, as being unfeminine and therefore masculine, ugly, unattractive. And the way this culture defines femininity is would be a set of traits that make you pleasing to the male gaze and pleasing to men. Not pleasing to yourself or pleasing to whatever it is that women might think is most important, but if you get outside of those those narrow norms or narrow scripts, then 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 you would be considered to be moving away from femininity and therefore less attractive to to men. Male gaze, of course. That makes the ad I saw earlier make so much more sense. <gasps> no, not that one. It had the music. No, not that one. That one. God, that commercial came out when I was in middle school. I can't imagine what young girls today are seeing online about how to be feminine and how to be beautiful. I think girls have been totally socialized with traditional gender norms around beauty, even though the definition of that might have shifted. Oh, it's definitely shifted. Today we get our ads from social media influencers, which are basically women online that seem to meet the standard of beauty who have influence over girls' buying decisions. I think it's very difficult for her to say to herself, the most important thing uh, about me is not how I look, and not whether my body is thin, uh, whether I have the right kind of complexion, the right kind of hair, not having certain kind of hair on my body. I think it's very difficult to get young black girls to shift their thinking about those things because the cultural messaging is so dominant. But there are some positives to social media. Hashtag body hair. Still a lot of white women though, but I guess it's for another day. See you later.